Hey everybody, welcome here. This is our third Youth Night Online. We're glad that you're here. Before we get started, we just have some quick announcements. Now, now announcement <laughs> number one is that we have a Wednesday Bible study at 3.30 through the platform of Zoom. If you would like to be involved, uh, just email me at lfriesen at northview.org or dfriesen at northview.org and we will get you connected. Second announcement, follow us on our Instagram and you will be shown some really cool things. Especially at 1 o'clock. Especially at 1 o'clock. But other than that, uh, those are our two announcements. Uh, we have a lot coming up tonight for uh, this video. Uh, we are going to do some Bible reading. Luke is going to do some teaching. We'll have some reflection time. And then uh, you all are going to meet in your Zoom groups again. If you don't know what your Zoom group is, uh, message us. Let us know and we'll direct you to the right group for your grade. Um, but before all of that, uh, we know that the last couple weeks you guys have uh, jumped into school. Mm. Most of you. Um, and you're learning lots of new things, probably, it's all probably new and exciting. Um, but your leaders think that there are some fun facts that you should maybe know. Did so you know? Did you know that if you spend lots of time and energy and work weeding your entire lawn so that it, you can get rid of dandelions, you'll find that the following summer, um, it looks no better than it did before. Oh, come on, man. Did you know that I am married? <laughs> Did you know that I won a corn eating contest eating 15 corn on the cobs? Did you know that this is maple wood and it tastes like maples? Mmm. Did you know that I got bit by a rattlesnake and almost died because I didn't obey my dad when he said don't play with the rattlesnakes? Did you know that Saab stands for Svenska Aeroplan Akti Bohawk? Did you know that I've taught over 300 kids how to ride a horse? Did you know that Pace Salsa, the mild kind, is the best salsa that you can buy? Because it is. Did you know that this is a Boston fern? Did you know that petting a dog is proven to make you feel more relaxed and at peace and to lower stress levels. Did you know that beagles are some of the hungriest dogs in the world and they'll do just about anything for food? Did you also know that I eat it almost every single day? Because I do. Did you know that babies can learn to harmonize with same voices as young as eight months old? <laughs> Did you know that this is my dog? It's so tough, friends. Uh, well, I hope you all learned something from your youth leaders. Um, now we're gonna jump into Bible reading time, so you need to take your Bible out. Um, you can open it up to John 14 and read along with us. John 14, one to 14. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. You know the way to where I am going. Lord, Thomas said, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Lord, said Philip, show us the Father and that's enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been among you all this time and you do not know me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who lives in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And he will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me, 
anything in my name, I will do it. Hey everyone, as you just heard, Danae uh, read John 14, 1 to 14, and I'm just going to expand on it a little bit. But as, as I was reading John 14 by myself, uh, I couldn't help but see uh, Jesus right in the middle of that, uh, the question asking from his disciples, how he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And it was thinking about destinations and journeys, and it reminded me of a journey that I went on with Danae, is one of our first dates, we went to Bellingham, and uh, we went to get pizza and go walk around the ocean, because those two things Danae loves is pizza and the ocean. And so we started walking and going, and it was a great time, we had a fun time, and uh, I told her, yeah, I'll have you back around 10.30, because that's when the school, her school, well, not her school started, but she needed to be home so she could get up early for school and get ready and all that kind of stuff. So it's still school day. And so we're driving back home, and it's like 9.45, so we have 45 minutes to get home, and when I said I would, and uh, we're driving for 45 minutes, and we don't get home, and Bellingham's only about 45 minutes away. And she's like, Luke, are, do you know where you're going? And I'm like, yeah, the name. I don't, I don't know, I'm not lost. Another 15, 20 minutes. Luke, do you know where you're going? Yeah, I'm positive. I know where I'm going. going. Luke, let's just pull over to the side of the road, and like, we'll get out, and we'll just like, I'll turn on my phone, we'll, I'll, I'll pay the five bucks, and we can go. And she, I'm like, come on, no. I, I can do this. I can, I can get back. See those, see those hills over there? That's, that's, that's Sumas. That's where we're going. We're going to Sumas. Okay, Luke. 20, 25, 30 more minutes. So now it's like, it's uh, like 11.30. Luke, let me just turn on my, I'm going to just turn on my GPS. No, Danae, I got this. I'll figure it out. Now it's, now it's 12 o'clock. Fine, Danae, you know what? Turn it on. I'm running low on gas and we just need to go and I haven't seen a gas station in a while. And so she turned on her GPS and would you believe it? That that GPS actually led us right back home. Got right back, nick of time. I was almost completely out of gas. I was running on fumes. And the GPS worked. She paid the five bucks, whatever, or I paid the five bucks. And we got home safer and before one o'clock, which was nice. How many times have you heard stories like that or been in a circumstance like that yourself where you're lost, turn on the GPS and you're found? It's like, oh, it's like a Christian thing, right? Like it's a Christian life metaphor being like, I was lost and couldn't do this by myself, and then I needed outside help to get me to where I was supposed to be going. Like, it's a, I think it's a good example of our Christian lives, is that we are so lost. Like, just me in Bellingham, I am lost. I'm in a foreign country. I don't know how to get back home. I couldn't even tell you where home was. I said that was hills were sumas, but they probably weren't. I've talked to numerous kids and leaders and adults and sometimes along the way we get lost we don't know quite where we're going and you see here from what Danae read is that you see some disciples who know where they want to go but they don't know how to get there and they don't see that Jesus is the way Jesus makes some pretty bold claims in this passage that the only way to get to that destination, the only way to get there, is to go through Jesus. See, in ancient Israel, their goal was to be with God one day. That was their goal, to be with God. See, where our destination in life is a bit different, in Israel, they're all searching for God, but they didn't know how to get there. And Jesus is like, me, 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 me. I am how you get there. Me and the Father, we're one. We're tight. We're like this. But here, in modern day Canada, I, th I think we get lost about where we are going and how to get there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look how Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus is the only way to life. And Jesus is the only way to truth. Jesus is the only way. That is what we're going to take away from this. But there's two things that I want us to look at today. The journey and destination of our Savior. So the journey and destination of Jesus. 
and then the journey and destination of us. So we're going to look at who Jesus is, his journey and destination, how he is the way, and then we are going to look at what is our journey and destination. So first, um, the disciple actually asked a good question. Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? I mean, a, b- a bunch of us probably have this, or I know I, I've had this, that there's a kid in your class that always asks those the questions that everyone in the class is thinking, but everyone's like, that's a dumb question to ask because we should know it by now. So these dudes have been with Jesus for three years, and they're asking Jesus, where are you going? We have no idea where you're going. And Jesus is like, seriously? Like, Thomas, you know you know where I'm going. You, you know where I'm, you don't know where I'm going. You you don't know. You don't re, you don't know who I am. I am God, Thomas. This is what Jesus responds. And so we all have that one kid in class that just kind of takes the rap for all of us that we're all thinking that question. Probably have some of those friends that you just whisper over to, like, hey, ask this question. It's a good question, and they ask it, and then they look like an idiot. And but then you're like, ah, now I know the question. The first thing we have to look at is where is Jesus going? What is Jesus's journey and destination? What is Jesus's purpose in life? What, why did he come? If he is saying he and the Father are one, well, why, why did Jesus come to earth? Well, what was the point of all of it? And so right now, I want you to answer this question, what is the purpose of Jesus? You can pause the video for a bit and then write that down. Okay, so I'm gonna read a passage. Uh, It's a lengthy passage in John 10, so a couple couple chapters before this. Uh, And so Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and the sheep know me. Just as the father knows me, I know the father and I lay my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there should be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay my life down only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. So what Jesus is saying is he, he's bringing the Israelites, the Jews and the Gentiles, which would be like you and me, everybody who's not a Jew together. And he's going to save them by laying down his life for them so that they can have his clean and good record in the eyes of God. Because their their goal is to get to God, but they can't get to God because they are sinful. And Jesus sees this. He's like, well, I can go to the Father because I'm good. So what if I gave my good record to these sheep? And these sheep then could see God. What a Savior. Is that not amazing? If you look in the middle of it, Jesus says there's someone who comes, the thief, the evil one, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But what does Jesus come? Jesus says, he says it right there. He says, I have come to bring life. Not only life, but life and have it to the full. He comes to bring a life better than you could ever sought to have yourself. So when Jesus says in John 14 that I am the way, the truth, and the life, that he means that my life is perfect. And my life can be yours. My, my perfect life can be yours. Think about it in the sense of like a video game. And you've been struggling on this video game your whole the, the whole time you've been playing it. And then all of a sudden, your friend who's mastered and beat it and got perfect, he's like, hey, just take, take my saved slot or whatever you want to call it. Just You can have it. I'll take your crappy one. 
Like Jesus, Jesus gave his hard work, his perfectness and gave it to us. Jesus gave everything for these sheep so that they could be with the Father. Just as Jesus was with the Father, he now gave that privilege to us. And now how sweet is that? How good is that? That, they, that, that the news is so good for people like you and me who have been on this life trying to get around, trying to get out of Bellingham to get to the promised land of Abbotsford, but still have not. Jesus has laid his life down for the sheep. We see the destination of Jesus. That his purpose was to save these sheep. Jesus laid down his life for people like you and me. That was his journey. That was his destination. That was his purpose so that we could have life. Now, how good is that? Second point. Second point. So that was the first point, the journey and destination of our Savior, and this is the journey, the destination of us. So I want you to think, write this question down, or write, write down this answer. Write down what you want to do with your life and why. What do you want to do with your life? So pause the video and write that question down and unpause. What is the destination in life? What is the purpose of your life? What is the purpose of your life? What is the purpose that the people around you want your purpose to be? See, we're all going somewhere. None of us are just standing still. Standing still is still doing something. Nobody can do nothing. We're all heading in some sort of direction in this life. So where are you going? No matter what you're doing, you're going towards something, whether it's to become like a lawyer or a doctor or a McDonald's worker, whatever it is, we're all striving to become something in this world and we put in required things in order to get that. If you want to be a McDonald's worker, you have to fill your application and go in for an interview, actually show up for work and then you become a McDonald's worker. If you want to be a doctor, there's certain prerequisites you have to do in order to get that job. We are all headed somewhere. So with your current trajectory, where are you headed? Where are you going? In high school, I built my whole life around high school, around friends. I did everything for my friends. I never spent time with my family, never spent time with the church, never did anything except for my friends. And what happens after high school? You, you don't see your friends anymore. What happens during this quarantine? You don't see your friends anymore. Everything I did was for them. I had no purpose in my life after high school because my purpose was gone. I didn't see my friends every day. I, 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 I didn't. And then I thought about what, what am I supposed to do? The world is telling me you need to get a, get a, go to a good university to get a job. Then you could get it when you had a good job, you could get married, you could get a house, then you could have kids, and then you could work all the way until you're 65 and then get a retirement and then sit back and relax in life. And that is your purpose to one day retire. After high school, I was thinking, is that is that my purpose in life? Is that my destination? Is that why I'm supposed to go to U of E, then transfer to UBC, and then get married, have some kids, get a house? So I could sit there and be retired. That's what I'm striving towards. Was that what I was building for myself? See, this is the difference between us and the people of Israel is that they wanted God, but they didn't know how to get there. We want something that we think will actually give us satisfaction. There's actually a quote by Barack Obama that I actually like. And he says this, focusing your life solely on making a buck shows a certain poverty of ambition. It asks too little of yourself because it's only when you hitch your wagon to something larger than yourself that you realize your true potential. What he's saying is don't go chasing money. Go chase something bigger. And I kind of agree with Barack. Oh, Mr. Obama, uh, you got to chase right, That's a terrible impression. You got, you got to chase something larger than money. 
And Jesus has the answer that you chase Jesus. So we're going to do another question. So you can pause the video. What right now are you hitching your wagon to? So whatever you wrote down, how is that going? See, a lot of things have been taken away from a lot of people. See, Philip is again rocked in this passage. And Jesus is like, Philip, don't you see? I am your purpose in life. I am the way to the Father. I am your journey. I am your destination. Follow me, Philip. Picture your life sort of like a glass jar with water in it. And at the bottom of it, picture there's sand. So you have this glass jar. And if you let it just sit there, pretty and don't touch it ever, it'll be clear. The sand will stay at the bottom and it'll be clear. What if you put the lid on it and you start shaking the water? The sand will come up and it'll be all murky. I mean, is that not kind of like our lives right now? Is there this, there's this underlying sin stuff that's been in our life, this dirt, this uncleanliness that's been in our lives? And it's taken something like this, this, this COVID-19 thing to really shake us, to really show us where our priorities are. The good thing is, is that it shows us where we have not been depending on God, where we've not been de 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 depending on Jesus. It actually shows that there's stuff in our lives that Jesus wants to get rid of. That there's certain stuff that we're hitching our wagon to. There's certain things we're not listening to that we should be listening to. We think we're doing stuff our own way. There's stuff that we need to get rid of, that Jesus wants to get rid of. I mean, if you, you continue in this uh, passage at the very end, at 12 to 14, Jesus says this. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. You may look at that and be like, okay, what, what can I do that's greater than Jesus? Okay, look, look what Jesus is telling. The greater work is he's going to go die to the cross. Just like we read in John 10. Jesus is saying, I, I'm going to go to the Father by laying his life down for us. He's going to the Father. The greater work is the miracle that Jesus is bringing an unholy people filled with dirt and muck in their life who've hitched their wagons to so many bad things that he's bringing those people, the people that continue to try to do life by themselves and go on the wrong journey, the wrong roads. He's bringing those lost sheep those people to a relationship with God. Now, how beautiful is that? That's the greater work. And how he says the greater work will be done in you is when you yourself will have the relationship with God that was impossible. Maybe Jesus did amazing things. Yes, Jesus did amazing things in his life. He raised people from the dead. He gave people food. He, he healed the sick. He did all those things, crazy, amazing things. The sick person will get sick again. The hungry person will get hungry again. The person who's raised from the dead will die again. The greater work is Jesus giving his life so that we can actually have life. Jesus died so that we may have life. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way to the Father because he reveals the Father. He and the Father are one. So if you're a Christian, what do you say for yourself? Are you following the one? Are you following the way? Or are you getting a little sidetracked right now? Has this whole pandemic showed that there's something else you're actually chasing? There's something else you're actually pursuing? I'm going to close with an illustration. Um, it's Robert. It's, a, it's about Robert Robinson. What a great name! He's the guy who wrote the hymn "Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing." It's like "Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing." You know that song? I'll look it up. It's a good song. This is what uh, was said by him by a guy named H. G. Bosch. 
Robert Robinson, author of the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, lost a happy communion with the Savior he had once enjoyed. And in his declining years, he wandered into the byways of sin. As a result, he became deeply troubled in spirit. Hoping to relieve his mind, he decided to travel. In the course of his journeys, he became acquainted with a young woman on a spiritual matters. And so she asked him what he thought of a hymn she had been reading. To his astonishment, he found it had been none other than his own composition. He tried to evade her question, but she continued to press him for a response. Suddenly he began to weep with tears streaming down his cheeks saying, I am the man who wrote that hymn many years ago. I'd give anything to experience that joy I knew then. Although greatly surprised, she reassured him that the streams of mercy mentioned in his song still flowed. Mr. Robinson was deeply touched. Turning his wandering heart to Lord, he was restored to full fellowship. So where are you? Did you once feel like you had Jesus and you were pursuing and now you're maybe a bit lost? Maybe it's that experience at summer camp that you just loved and now you're like, I don't know what I'm doing now. Are you lost like how I was in America? So sure you knew what was going on, where you were going and how to get there. Has this whole thing that's going on in our world today actually made you look being like, I am not in control. I have no idea what's happening. I can't even control what I do. If any of that is you, Listen to what Jesus says. That he is the way, the truth, and the life. That Jesus has come to bring life and life to the full. Is that not what you want? I'm going to pray. And then we are going to go into our Zoom groups. Okay, pray with me. Father, we thank you for who you are we thank you that you are a good god who gave his son so willingly so that we could be with you god you're so amazing that you gave us the gift of your son so that we could be close with you thank you for the guidance that your son is god may he work in our hearts to see you better each day we pray this all through your son's name by the power of your spirit amen okay have fun in your core groups So that was some great teaching from Luke. Um, Over the next couple of minutes, we're gonna have some reflection questions come up on the screen and there's gonna be some time for you to actually sit and think about some of these things. Uh, So as the questions come up, take some time, think about them, um, and this will prepare you to talk about some of these things in small groups later on. That you approve